Hey folks, Connor from Nysos here. In this video, we're gonna talk about the comparisons between a hub motor e-bike versus a mid-drive e-bike. So in this video, we'll talk about how each system actually functions. We'll talk about the pros and cons of each, and then we'll go through how each system will affect the ride of your bicycle. So let's move on to some of the benefits of hub motor bikes. One of the first things that you'll find with them is that you have a lot of drivetrain freedom. Uh, since it's not like a mid-drive where it's leveraging the chain, uh, it's kind of working independently from the motor itself, and it's really just, you know, your pedals working with a sensor to tell the motor what to do. So having the freedom uh, to do what you want with your drivetrain is, is really great, especially when it comes to chain ring changing if you need to get a tougher gear, you can. It's not gonna really affect the electric system. It also comes in handy when you're installing a bionics kit on your already existing bike, and it leaves you with you know, a lot of options, a wide range of things that you can install that kit on. One of my favorite benefits of the motor is really just the feel of the ride. Uh, since all of the power is coming from behind you, you do feel like you're getting pushed, uh, which to me personally is a satisfying feeling, but may not be a must have for everybody. Benefits that you'll see on the higher end uh, hub motor system like Stromer, Bionics, and Easy Motion, since they're all based off of just torque sensing, it uh, has a really fluid feeling to the ride that, you know, it's really basing off of your pedal pressure um, to what the motor's gonna actually do. So if you back off your pedals, the motor's gonna back off. If you're pushing really hard, the motor's gonna work at its top capacity. Uh, and, you know, that really comes into play with the torque sensing uh, pedal assist hub motor systems. Another thing that you'll find with a lot of hub motor bikes is that a lot of them are priced at a, a very approachable and lower price point uh, in comparison to some of those mid-drive units that are out there. And what you'll find with those lower price systems is that uh, they're cadence sensed and a lot of them are you know, just sensing movement in your cranks in the bottom bracket area. Uh, so that allows you to not have to push at all if that's something that you're looking uh, to have. As long as there's movement, the motor's gonna be uh, assisting you based off of the mode that you pick. Um, so sometimes if you want an easier ride, a hub motor is, is a great way to go. Now moving on to some of the cons of hub motor bikes. The first and most obvious one is going to be that the weight distribution is not as good as a mid-drive bike. Uh, you'll usually have a pretty big heavy motor in the back wheel and this will vary greatly from manufacturer to manufacturer, uh, but some motors can be as heavy as 15 pounds and that's a lot of weight in the back wheel. It prevents you from putting a lot more weight on the back or cargo on your rear rack. It also makes a, a rear flat a lot harder to fix on your own, so it may require you to return back to the shop more when it comes to rear motor flats. Some of the higher end systems like Stromer have a through axle, which makes changing a flat relatively easy, but you're not gonna find that on all of the hub motor bikes that are out there. So when you do have a hub motor, you wanna make sure that your tire pressure is exactly where it's supposed to be, or even a little bit more than what the tire recommends. Uh, you wanna make sure that's always pumped up to reduce your risk of flats. And as you know, thicker tires or any kind of tire liners are gonna be very helpful too, uh, to prevent the flats on the rear motor wheel, because when it happens, it's pretty tough to actually replace on the go. And lastly, when it comes to battery consumption, hub motors are generally going to consume more battery than a mid-drive system will. It's very common to see on a lot of hub motor bikes that they have very big batteries. Uh, if you compare that to a mid-drive, you'll often find that most of them are, are relatively small in comparison. But that's because they're a little bit more efficient and they don't really need as big of a battery to provide as much range. So moving on to the mid-drive units, uh, the way they work is that all of the sensors are gonna be located in the actual motor itself. Uh, they vary from system to system, but usually each one is gonna measure your speed, your torque, and your cadence. It's gonna combine a couple different sensors that are firing off pretty often uh, you know, in the system itself, and that's gonna be what generates your pedal assist. So the way that mid-drive units actually deliver the power to you is that they leverage your drivetrain that's on the bike. Uh, so it's very important that when you're riding a mid-drive, you're riding it and shifting the gears as if you were riding a regular bicycle. The motor will sense when you're pedaling and it's gonna spin the sprocket even faster uh, than what you would normally do on a regular bike. So because the motor is leveraging the existing bike components, uh, that's what's gonna allow it to climb hills very efficiently uh, because it's really only just spinning the sprocket and it's gonna use the gears that are on your bike uh, to kind of just assist you and help you climb those hills even better. So moving on to some of the benefits of a mid-drive unit, 
Uh, one of the biggest things is that all the weight of the bike, as far as the electrical components go, is going to be low and center. So that's going to give the bike a very good balance. Uh, it frees up some space on your rear rack carrier so that you can actually load up a lot of cargo in the back and you know, not have to worry about putting too much stress on your back wheel. The efficiency of mid-drives is also another great point about them uh, that's making them so popular nowadays. Uh, you'll see that a lot of mid-drive units uh, like the Bosch and Bros systems uh, and even the Shimano Steps are going to have relatively small sized batteries. If you compare even a 500 watt hour pack to some of the hub motorbikes that are going, you know, 6 or 700, 800, even 900 plus watt hours, um, you'll see that these really don't need that to provide a lot of range. So because the mid-drive unit is actually moving a lot less mass, it's really only powering uh, that sprocket instead of a whole wheel, that's going to allow it to be a lot more efficient and make better use of smaller size batteries. Mid-drives definitely excel at hill climbing in comparison to the hub motor. Uh, that's one point of your ride that if you are going to be on a lot of hills, you may want to consider a mid-drive. But when it comes to the maintaining top end speed, uh, they don't maintain it as easily and require you to work a little bit more than a lot of the hub motor driven bikes that are out there. One of the main downsides when it comes to mid-drive units is that it'll generally wear your drivetrain a little bit faster. Because it is putting that extra torque on the chain and your sprockets, uh, you may need to swap your chain and sprockets out uh, a little bit more than you would as opposed to a hub motor bike. Now some systems are really high end like the, uh, like the Bosch system and they have shift sensing that'll make the motor back off while you're actually changing gears. So that's gonna help extend the life of your drivetrain a little bit more. But some systems don't have them. So it's something to keep in mind uh, to when you're shifting so that you're not mashing your gears while you're riding. And as I was saying before, uh, some of the speed pedelec or class three bikes uh, may not maintain that top speed uh, when you're going high above 20 miles an hour as easily as some of the hub motor bikes out there. So as you can see, there's a lot of benefits uh, and pros and cons to weigh when it comes to choosing which system is right for you. A couple of main points to consider are where you're riding, uh, how heavy you want the bike to be, and really how you want it to ride. So while mid-drives are becoming very popular as of recent because of their efficiency and general lighter weight, uh, some people still prefer the, uh, the classic feel of a hub motor bike and the ability to maintain some of those top speeds. So it really depends on what you're looking for out of the bike. If you're having some trouble trying to select which bike is best for you, uh, you can leave a comment in the comment section below and we'll be able to help you out. Or you can give us a call or email us at the shop. We'll be happy to help you with your selection. Thanks so much for watching this video comparison on the hub motors versus mid-drive motors. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, as well as turn on your notifications to let you know when we release new content.